Hello, people. I'm Sandy, and I've got a story about parental favoritism. You see, my parents often choose their favorites contrary to common sense. Therefore, you shouldn't really strive to be a good child. Whether you're good or worthless, it still won't influence their decision. They say that I hit the lottery at birth. My parents were very rich, and they've been growing more and more rich with each passing year. My dad is a very successful businessman who controls a whole supermarket chain that spans through the whole country. And my mom supervises an eco-cafe network. We never needed money. On the contrary, both my sister and I had everything we'd ever wanted and so much more since childhood. For example, when I was 12, I really wanted a pony. Actually, we already had some horses, but those belonged to my parents, and I demanded a pony of my own like a real aristocrat. Dad didn't even ask if I really needed it. He just called the breeder and bought an adorable little cutie. The pony lived a happy life. I really enjoyed riding it until I grew up. Every other one of my wishes was fulfilled in a similar manner. Molly and I just pointed a finger at something and the parents immediately bought us anything we desired. And when we got older, mom and dad handed each of us an unlimited credit card. To be fair, we still had some responsibilities. Each of us had to study while at school. And we also had to be present at dinner parties that parents arranged for their business partners. During such parties, we had to put happy faces on and entertain the children of the guests with intellectual games in the nursery. White people problems, sure. But I never wanted to remain always just another beautiful girl and a dutiful daughter of wealthy parents. I wanted to make a name for myself. I wanted to be remembered because of my own personal achievements, not just a nameless scion of a rich family. Even now I remain an ambitious person. I was an honor student at school. Molly also received a lot of A's for her tests. But my grades were well-deserved. My sister received education for show. I studied for my own good. I understood that my parents' money would buy us any kind of education, but my ambitions demanded me to work for it. When I was 16, I asked my parents for a small sum, bought fresh succulent flowers, and made a picture of them with my own hands. I created it in a fit of inspirations, a little design joke with an eco bias, nothing more. I presented this work to my mother. She placed it in one of her cafes and people suddenly liked it. Everyone asked mom where she'd got such a masterpiece. Mom gave them my business card with a phone number, an Instagram link, and Facebook page on it. At first, of course, my web pages contained only sketches, examples of someone else's work similar to mine, and lists of available flowers from nearby farms. But soon, my portfolio grew considerably. At first, it was just a hobby to enjoy in my spare time. But by the time I was 19, the innocent hobby grew into a full-fledged, large-scale business. I owned three stores in different parts of the city where you could buy my mini compositions, aquariums, and some small works of art. There were also catalogs with paintings and designs available on demand. If none of the available variants fit, I got an option of custom-made works of art based on the sketches of the customers. I also had two succulent farms and one small workshop where employed workers made boxes for my compositions and installed irrigation systems. And the best part was that I organized my business all by myself. I didn't even need to ask my parents' advice. I became a full-fledged businesswoman. I also had plans for making a landscape design service, but that idea was reserved for the future. Yet my sister chose a different path. I studied hard, graduated from school with honors, entered a university of finance, but Molly just wasted her life away. She paid no attention to studies, hung out with friends, used every permitted and banned substance since she was 15. And at the age of 17, she ended up in a hospital after a heavy trip. It was her first time in the hospital due to this very reason, but hardly the last. She herself claimed that she just lived her life to the fullest. Soon, my parents spent all their free time looking after Molly and nearly forgot about me. After all, I was okay by myself, and my sister needed constant supervision, care, money, and all that crap. As if she didn't understand what she was doing. That's how I distanced myself from my family. So once I came to our family lawyer on my business, just when my parents were making changes in their will, they had a strange tradition, or should I call it a hobby? Once a year, they steadily visited our lawyer in order to either confirm or make changes to their will. That day, the parents were also occupied by the particular hobby of theirs. 
That's how I became an involuntary witness of how they ditched me with their inheritance. My parents didn't even try to hide their actions. They clearly were going to leave all their property, including both businesses, to Molly. In response to my stunned look, Dad threw his hands up in the air and said that my sister needed it more than I did. And then he asked me to have a talk at home. Naturally, after such an event, I was not in the mood for conversations. If my sister was that important for mom and dad and I was left with nothing, then they were free to talk to her to their heart's content. Maybe such news would finally make her see some reason after all. So I just turned around and left them to their business. I had a home and a life of my own, and I needed nothing from them. I did not answer their calls, and I did not regret anything. My own business is successful. I'll soon build my palace with ponies and a pond with carps. And my parents are free to cater to Molly's every wish, if she's so dear to them. I hope they'd have time before she makes one more mistake and completely obliterates her health. I resent only one thing. All my life, I honestly tried to be the best, and it turned out that nobody needed it. After all, they just flushed everything I'd been working for down the drain, along with all my achievements and awards. Not that I want their money. I just hated it when it became clear that Molly was still their favorite, despite all her misdeeds. Hello, people. I am the mother of these two girls, Sandy and Molly. And here's my part of the story. Each coin has two sides. And in order to correctly assess who is right and who is wrong, you need to study from both. My husband and I are really very guilty towards the girls, but not because we love one daughter more than another. Both of them are equally important for us, and we care about them, but we paid too much attention to our business and to the pursuit of money and didn't pay enough attention to the upbringing of our little princesses. And now, we pay dearly for our mistake. Both of us were constantly working and compensated the lack of parental love with lavish gifts. We hired the best nannies, governesses, educators, and teachers. My husband and I hardly ever even talked to them. We just took money out of our wallets and paid for all the servants, toys, sweets, and gifts. And we thought it was enough. The girls received the same education, were brought up in equal conditions, and had only a year of age difference. Yet somehow, they turned out to have completely different personalities. They perceive the same action from different angles. For example, Molly always believed that we were obliged to buy her everything and entertain her, and Sandy persistently tried to somehow refund all our expenses, as if we would demand something from her. Sandy studied hard and hardly ever rested. That's how she paid us back for her well-being, and then she became a full-blown businesswoman. Our eldest turned out to be a very proud, strong, and truly independent girl. Sandy was sure she could do anything, and worked to the limit of her abilities to get the results she desired. Many times, I saw how my daughter worked all night on this project of hers, but she never came up to us, never asked for help. I've always respected Sandy and, to be honest, even became a little afraid of her. She took after her father. He was just as stubborn and never gave up on an idea until the very end. But my husband became softer with age, and Sandy somehow grew even more obstinate. Molly, on the other hand, had a completely different personality. She was softer than her sister far more vulnerable, and much more pliable for any dubious undertakings. No, I don't justify her, and I understand perfectly well that no one poured alcohol into her mouth by force. Still, when you're a teenager, your friends are a strong influence, and when you are 15, it's incredibly difficult to refuse indulging in forbidden stuff, especially when you've never heard the word no before. That's how Molly took a wrong path. My husband and I had no choice but to try to stop her from falling into the abyss before it was too late. Maybe it looked like we were really fussing over her. I don't know for sure. But for some reason, Sandy suddenly became jealous. The more time we spent with Molly, the more the distance between us and Sandy grew. Until recently, we hoped that the girls would grow up as best friends and would support each other at the most dangerous moments of their life. 
My husband and I tried to do everything so that our vision became true, and perhaps we went too far, because as a result, we lost both our daughters at once. I was initially against those changes to our will. I told my husband that we were making a huge mistake, yet he wouldn't listen to me and claimed that the girls would always be together and such a decision would only bring them closer to each other. In his eyes, everything was going out perfectly. Molly never gave a damn about our businesses, and Sandy, on the contrary, would not leave her sister for the sake of business. Such a horrible misunderstanding. We didn't hide the changes to our will, and when Sandy saw them, she acted in her typical manner. My daughter made her own conclusions, refused to listen to us, and simply left with her head held high. That's how we lost our eldest daughter. Now she thinks that we never loved her at all and wants nothing to do with us. And when Molly learned about the will, she really went to town. She said that, due to her being the only heir, she wanted to live to the fullest and refused to listen to us. She left home for several weeks, spent all her time partying with guys, alcohol, and drugs. As a result, my husband had his first heart attack and kicked Molly out of the house. Only then, I saw that our daughters had something in common. Our youngest refused to reconcile and also left with her head held high. That's how we lost our family, because of all the money and businesses. Now you know everything and can make your judgment. Write your opinion about this story, who is right, who is wrong, and what to do. You are welcome to have a discussion. Do not forget to share this video with your friends. 